Hi guys, I've had a number of requests for a David Bowie video, so today I'm going to go around a few spots in London which are associated with Bowie. This is 89 Oakley Square in Chelsea. David Bowie lived here between 1973 and 1974. There was a minor strike going on at the time. And David Bowie painted the interior of the house completely in black because he wanted to know what it would feel like to live in a mine. And it was here that um, his ex-wife Angie later claimed that she found him in bed with Mick Jagger. Gonna go off on a tangent here. There's uh, another place of interest on the same streets which is unrelated to... Um, David Bowie, but I'm going to show you anyway. Okay, we've got number 42 Oakley Street just in front of me. Bob Marley moved here in January 1977 after there was an attempt on his life in Jamaica. His wife and the new lineup of the Whalers also lived there. Whilst he was here, he apparently made friends with uh, members of the Ethiopian royal family who were exiled in London. And sadly, he was diagnosed with cancer um, in the same year that he moved here. And he died four years later in 1981 at the height of his career. Next stop is David Bowie's hometown of Brixton, but first here's a South African man on top of a statue. Just across the street from Brixton's underground station, there's a mural of David Bowie that was painted in 2013. This place became a focal point for grief when he died in January 2016. It's like at one time you could write on the wall. They put perspex like here now to protect it. It was created by Australian street artist James Cochran in 2013, June 2013. The artist said he was shocked and sad by the news of the star's death but that he was honoured to see the painting turned into a shrine for grieving fans. This is 40 Stansfield Road. This is where David Bowie was born in 1947. And he lived here till he was six years old. It's no plaque or anything, unfortunately. If you want to visit this place yourself, it's only about uh, half a mile or less uh, walk from Brixton Underground Station. Next stop is Denmark Street in the West End of London. But first they had this vegan burger at Gordon Ramsay's Street Burger Place. Denmark Street used to be the epicentre of the music industry in Britain at one time. The street was nicknamed Tin Pan Alley. It has a colourful history and I'm sure I'll be coming back here for future videos. The La Gia Conta Cafe used to be based at number 9. This was a popular spot for musicians to meet each other and David Bowie and Mark Bullen would often arrange to meet here in the 1960s when they were trying to break into the music industry. David Bowie's first agent ended up being right next door at number 7. I don't want to get sidetracked too much as this is a David Bowie video, but I'll just mention number six. The Sex Pistols used to live above number six, Denmark Street, and they recorded many of their early demos here. Johnny Rotten's graffiti was revealed in a recent archaeological survey of the site. The graffiti depicts other members of his band. By the 1980s, number one to three, Denmark Street was an employment centre, and the notorious serial killer Dennis Nielsen worked there. Oh. 
On to the next location. This is St Anne's Court in the Soho district of London. It's within walking distance of Denmark Street. Down this narrow alleyway is a building which is very ordinary in appearance but has a mind-blowing history. Number 17 was the location of Triton Studios, where David Bowie recorded the single Space Oddity, as well as the albums Hanky Dory and the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust. The facilities at the studios were so good at the end of the 60s that the Beatles left Apple Studios to record some of their songs here, including their classic Hey Jude. Other notable songs recorded here include Your Song by Elton John and Queen's Killer Queen. Triton gained the reputation for the sound of its piano, which appeared on all three songs I've just mentioned. David Bowie's friend Mark Bolan recorded many songs with T-Rex here, including the song Get It On. The Bee Gees, Tina Turner and the Rolling Stones, amongst many others, have recorded here as well. The original Titan Studios closed in 1981, but has since reopened under various names. Okay, now I've come to Convent Garden. I just want to show you the location of the former Blitz Club which was credited with starting the New Romantics movement, which itself was heavily influenced by David Bowie. The club had to draft in extra security when David Bowie visited the club in 1980. And David Bowie came here on the 1st of July 1980 to recruit four people for his Ashes to Ashes video. And there was a mini riot when he came. I plan to do another video on the Blitz Club and the New Romantics movement. Okay, I'm on Regent Street now. It's a Sunday morning, that's why it's uh, so quiet. S spectacular streets, it's kind of snakes around. I'm going to show you the, um, the ultimate David Bowie spot in London now. Looking for Hedden Street, and I should have just found it. <laughs> this is where the cover for the album The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust was taken. Ziggy reference there, Miss. That's strong, I think. So in the picture you're standing right here and there were some boxes there and he had his foot. Well, yeah, the foot was on the boxes, not on the wall. <laughs> to show you the ankle. So I guess the photo must have been taken around here. This ankle. It's a shame that this is in the way. This used to be like... Um, quite a run down back alley at the time but now it's uh, got loads of these um, posh restaurants I was here last night just to scout the place so I'll show you some of the footage there it looks more like what, the, uh, what you see in the photo was actually taken in black and white and later colorized so the color of his outfit is not the same as what it actually was and uh, he was sick with the flu when he took the pictures it wasn't actually night time it looks like it's night time in the picture but it's sort of uh, last light you see David Bowie died, this place came a little bit of a shrine. People were leaving flowers here. It's actually um, Martin Kemp of Spanta Bali who um, unveiled the plaque. I think they 
took 17 pictures in all, and some of the other pictures they took were also included on the album sleeve. Uh, the picture on the back of the album sleeve is uh, of him in a phone box, and that's just on the corner here. As you'd expect, people have been writing on this. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you here. It's not the actual original phone box, but it is identical to the original. actually a functional um, phone box as well. So then I face the strain. That's it, show's over.